Uh, the first question we always ask, like all I guess, is uh, when you first got to the league, who was the first person to like bust your ass? Like you was like, man, I'm I'm in the league. Like, <laughs> so I'm in the league. I got all them points right there. I felt like he gave all that to me. Uh, BD. Brian Davis. BD. Boom. Dizzle. BD used to tear me up, bro. He was so nice. His handle. He had a crazy the handle. Bob. The Diddy Bob. The Diddy Bob. He had a tray ball. Strong. He, strong, athletic. And he was a dog. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you know another dog when you sense one. When you see nice. one, I rolled up to him and saw your dog. Yeah. BD was the first one. And then, our, bro, it was crazy because I remember, like, my my rookie year, we wound up making the playoffs, like, last minute, right? Like, we was, um, we was like, going into the last game. We was like, we got to win this game to get AC. But somebody else won, somebody else lost, somebody else lost, and whatever. We ended up getting fourth seed. Yeah. So we in the locker room celebrating like, yeah, baby, you know, we getting the extra money for C, we got home right. court. And like, who we play? Charlotte. I had to go into a dark place. Yeah. I'm like, I got to guard BD for C, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Seven games? I was sick, went to a dark place. I went into a dark place, though. I'm a rookie, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, this is my first play of experience. I got to go against my, the person I hate guarding the most. So BD used to tear me down. Um, and also, like, I didn't like guarding Ray Allen and those guys, like Ray and Rip, because I didn't know how to chase screens. Chase screens. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know to get on the outside, the outside, outside shoulder. shoulder. <laughs> Even though, I, wait, I knew, because Coach Green taught us, but it you just know. Didn't stay disciplined. <laughs> just stay disciplined. They be tearing you up on them screens. At least boy. you got taught, bro. <laughs> like, I came from playing zone defense, bro. Oh, yeah. I was out there lost. And then, you know, I was playing the four. Then went from the four to the <laughs> two. two. And had to deal with Reggie, mm. Ray, That's what Rip, I said. Reggie scratching and calling Reggie. and throwing you, yeah. stopping and going. Oh, and Rip, Rip had them nails, them, bro. I used to hate Rip, for oh. real. Like, he was the coolest dude, so you really couldn't really want to fight him, but, like, you wanted to because yeah. you left the game the scarred. Nails, he, yeah, bro. Rip, I always act like he didn't do nothing wrong. Like, Because like, <laughs> he was there. so nice, too. You know he what was saying? the coolest dude ever. He was so cool. And you know what other, other people I didn't like guarding or guarding me? per se was the little guys in the league so like I'm, I'm not the tallest guy but anybody like shorter than me like Damon Stoudemire like those little mighty mouse bro I hate guarding them cause I, you know said he was quick yeah. fast and then at the same time like I, I'm playing a new position I'm playing point guard I never played it the point that's right man I got ripped so fast bro we was in Portland dog <laughs> yeah. I'm bringing the ball up about trying to call the play gone right so I'm like alright cool cool get it again I threw that mother L.O. next. I was like, here you go, L.O. Take that out. <laughs> <laughs> little dudes, I couldn't stand them. Yeah, David Stoudemire was cold. I, I love playing with him. That was my favorite point guard to play with. Yeah. And I was in the Never stop, never settle. What made you decide the high school you went to in Chicago? Um. Well, so I wanted to go to Whitney Young. Right, because you wanted to go to Whitney Young. Why yeah, you think that? Because Whitney Young was popping. I was going to go to Whitney Young. We was cracking. Keep rich and see the L and, and D Gates. They had Whitney Young popping in the city. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like I that. it was the Bulls and Whitney, Whitney Young. Young. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm like, pops, I want to go to Whitney Young. And my dad used to work downtown. You know what I mean? So it was like, uh, my dad was all for it. Yeah. But my older brother, uh, Demetrius, he went to he went to Richards. Yeah. And he was like the man over there, like creating yeah. his own brand, like his own thing over there. So I'm, I'm in between. He talking that noise. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah, doing I was a cold. Oh, me going to let you know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, in between. I, I used to be nice. Yeah, like, I know what you see now. <laughs> so I was in between. I'm like, man, I want to go down there. But legacy, I'm like, oh, I got a little, we got a little name and a little legacy over here. So uh, I just followed the path of my brother, you know what I mean? Then I found out, I think Whitney Young had an interest test. You had to yeah. take a test to get in. I was like, nah, I'm, yeah. I'm cool. Not <laughs> on that level. <laughs> no, I, don't know. I don't know what that might be like. And that uh, test was hard, too. That's what I'm like saying. Like a three hour joint or something. Like, what? To get in school? Yeah, then they was like, my dad was like, you had to ride with me every morning, you know, get dry. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go to Richards. Like, I know everybody here. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because we played. Our backyard, when I grew up, our backyard was a spot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That was like the that was like the garden. Yeah. Everybody from the neighborhood coming right. hooping our backyard. Yeah. So I knew everybody already. I knew all the I knew all, all the, the hoopers. All the hoopers. <laughs> I knew all the older <laughs> classmen. I knew yeah. I knew everybody. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go on here and go over here. <laughs> when you got the riches, he got to meet the legend. 
<laughs> my, my, my great, I'm serious. My grade school coach, Mr. Gary Adams, yeah. legendary, legendary. In, the, in, in my neighborhood. <laughs> I'm talking about in the Cooper Park. Yeah. My grade school, Whistler, he coached for I don't even know how many years, but the whole Cooper Park area know like Mr. Adams is a legend. They respect old white dude, got respect and love in the hood. Love this man. To this yeah. day, know who Mr. Adams is. So just talk about the impact he had on you at Richards as yo he was an assistant coach. He was assistant coach, yeah. He was assistant coach when I was at Richards. So um, I used to, when I was younger, um, with my brother, I used to go to their practices, you know what I mean? Cause you know, my brother was kind of like babysitting, I guess, right? So I had to go to their practice and I'd just be sitting on the side, you know, just watching him. Then after practice, he always grabbed me and be like, yo, do I come down here, let's get some shots in, whatever. So he started like building that in me early. So when I got to school, like it was just like a automatic, like, hey, D, come on, let's get some work in. Mm -hmm. So he kind of built that, that work habit in me that I didn't even know like that you needed, you know what I mean, to go to the next level. And then from there, he was like, he started doing little things like, hey, you know, find a player, you know, whatever, whoever's your favorite player, watch what they do, and then let's work on it. So then Q Rich was my favorite player, you know what I mean? Because it was somebody like size-wise. I'm like, you know what? Yeah. We're about the same size. And he had a relationship with Q. So it became easy for me to be like, I'm gonna follow Q. Yeah. So we, so with him, he, what he did to me, like he took me to DePaul games, you know what I mean? He took me to, uh, he took me to like kind of watch and see it. And also, so then, and then we worked on whatever we seen. Like I remember, Q was an amazing rebounder. So I was like, "Yo, I want to be a good rebounder." Yeah. So we started working on certain ways of how, like the tricks of the trades, like what you need to do. He had me so cold, bro. He had me doing stuff that I ain't, I ain't know that even existed. What's funny is he the one who got me started rebounding like that. Like when we, you know, my grade school team, we was we had a dope team. You know what I'm saying? So he was like. You know, we had two good guards. We had uh, Michael Timberlake, who was uh, a center. He was like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, in grade school. We had my cousin, Nate. And like, we had a cool squad. So it was like, you know, it was a lot of dudes that could get it. And he used to be like, everybody can't get the ball. He was like, he like, which one of y'all, you know how you used to talk to, you gonna be a big dope or you gonna be smart? You know, like he'd say, he like, <laughs> you real with he you. Like, he like, look, what are you doing? Like, go get a, go get a rebound. He was like, like, nobody, how, how, yeah, how, how, my cousin <laughs> Nate. So it was like, we had a crew though, but it used to be like, Everybody can't shoot. He was like, which one of you fools are gonna be smart and just say, I don't I don't need the ball? He was like, somebody, you don't need anybody to give you this. Nobody can take this from you. You the one who control that. Yes. So I was like, man, like, you know what? That's that's pretty, pretty smart right there. Let me just kind of figure out a way to camp, camp out under this under this glass, and I'm gonna just try and get tip ins and like, you know what I'm saying? So then I started figuring that out. And he was like, see, he figured it out. He was like, the rest of y'all just wanna shoot the ball. He was like, he right next to the basket. That's the easiest place to score. And you know, from there, just like you say, he would just give you little tidbits and, and, and just, you know what I'm saying, lead you along. Like, he was cold, man. He told, he told me one summer, he was like, it was a summer um, going into my, my junior year. So no one knew who I was at all, right? You know what I'm saying? So I'm coming in. I played sophomore two years in a row because my, my brother and them had a great varsity team mm -hmm. that year. And I couldn't get a lot of time. So I actually played sophomore level two years in a row. So coming into my junior year, he sits me down. And he showed me this list. It was a list of like all the top players. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was like, he was like, who name don't you see on there? So I'm, <laughs> I'm going down the list and everything. And I'm like, I don't know. He like, your name. <laughs> He's like, you ain't know. He's like, you're not on anyone's radar. He was like, he was like, so if you if you want to get here, if you want to get to this level, he was like, um, he was like, we're gonna put some work in this summer. He was like, but I'll be at your house at eight o'clock. I'm gonna hit the horn one time. That's it. If you don't come out, you don't want it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it was only, and I was always up ready, but it was one time where I was, you know, I was always sleeping. We had no alarm clocks. We had nothing. Yeah. It was one time, and I had to chase him all the way down the street. He was gone. I had to chase him all the way down the street, catch him in the light. He probably seen you too. I catch him in the light in the gray Buick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, up, like, then he upgraded to a gray Saturn. Hey. Oh, yeah, the Saturn. <laughs> hey, hey. He bro, dead serious. He's a, just like he said, like, bro, like, he used to take us to the tournaments. Like when we was in grade school, we used to go to, you know, all of the Brother Rice tournament for seventh and eighth grade teams, the St. Ignatius, St. Rita, pick us up in the little grave Buick. After the game, we win the tournament. He stopped and we get McDonald's, boy. It was like Christmas. I'm telling you, like, man, Mr. Allen was that dude, bro. I used to always wonder that, because I was like, I didn't play ninth grade. I only, I started playing high school ball in 10th grade. And we was playing with Butler. 
and you just came out of nowhere and you was like, good. Like, I remember when me and Butler was mad, like, man, no, nah, D-Wade supposed to be in the, ma- oh, in, in the Nike, the Nike, Nike camp. camp. Oh, man. We was like, how he ain't in Nike camp? He killing every tournament. We wasn't winning the tournament, but we was kicking ass was in them. Kicking, <laughs> <bro>. <laughs> Listen, I'm still, I'm, I'm gonna keep it real with you. I'm still hot about that. I'm <laughs> three championships in later. I'm still hot about that, bro. Let, let me tell you something now. Now, D. Miles, is, he's our guy. He, right. He's the dude. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, like, I don't feel like nobody else on the team was, like, that much better than me. You know what I'm saying? Nobody Outside of D. Miles, you know what I'm saying? Nobody like, TJ was cool. TJ Cummins was cool. was cool. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? He was a black hole, but he, he was, was a black cool. hole. He get that mug. We wouldn't, even pass him the ball. Say, we wouldn't even give him the ball. We wouldn't even give him the ball in the post. If you gave it to him, just go back. Just we go ain't back. get it back. No you know what I'm saying? We had some good players, though. Yeah, but I'm like, but the fact that we had, like, seven dudes off our team to go to the Nike camp. You know who didn't go? That's crazy. Me. Yeah. But I'm gonna tell you, I don't even know if you know this though. So so I Larry told me I was going. Butter told me I was going. Mm-mm. Yeah, so I didn't have coach cancel all the little summer, <laughs> you know, man, some of the uh, tournaments that you yeah, play in. Cause yeah. I'm like, coach, I'm going to Nike camp. So to the day, Butler was supposed to come pick me up. I'm at the crib wait. You know what I'm saying? I got my bags, I look at him, I'm like, oh, he's about an hour late. <laughs> about two hours late. Man, a band eventually showed up. And he when I, I walk out the house, I'm like, all right, y'all, I'm gone. And I, I see Bo, he got his head down, walking towards me. He's like, man, D, man, I, I tried everything, bro, but you know, you ain't, you ain't get in. Bro, I was heartbroken, dog. I didn't know that, I didn't bro, know that. I was heartbroken. I don't even know, you don't know it I now, know, but- I just know we was fighting, like, man, I'm, I'm in there like, bro, man, bro, D way better than all these dudes right here. Like, how he ain't hey. in Nike camp? Bro. And we was killing folks. Killing, bro. <laughs> like, we used to murder, bro. <laughs> Bro, they did me so wrong, dog. Yeah, they did. But bro. after that, though, I can't with like, it. Like, where you like, like? That's what I'm saying. Like, because even as a senior, he averaged like 31. Like his his numbers were. He like, came I'm out of nowhere. Like yeah, I'm talking about out of, out of nowhere. It was like when I came, I didn't play ninth grade, so I didn't think nobody knew me. I only played two teams. Like we played six games, eight games. We played two at their place and two at our. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think nobody even knew who I was. I went to the spotlight with Butler. And next thing you know, my ranking just went up, sky like high. Yeah. just went sky high. And now I'm playing in tournaments. The first tournament I went to was the Purdue tournament. Mm-hmm. I went went there and I met, that's when I met Q now. So now I'm playing like the lower level. I'm playing like the lower level and I'm playing like the higher level with Q now. I'm playing tournaments with Q now I'm playing the lower level. Right, but you weren't on that team. No, I wasn't. No, it was Jarence no. Howard and them and, and all Taps. them. Like, yep, yep. It, was, it was all them Taps. on the team, right? So then the next year I went and did USA, but I was hearing a little bit about you, but I didn't see you or so forth. So then when I came back and played the next song, we played together. Yeah, we played together, yeah. And then it was just like, me and my mom was coming around and all she used to be like, D-Wade this and D-Wade that. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll be killing just D and D-Wade. Yo, <laughs> like, bro, like it's crazy. So like, what, what, like once we met, like, cause I remember them telling me like, yo, we got this dude from, you know, East St. Louis, whatever, he nice. I'm like, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm new to this. I, right. First year playing AU, never played. And then, you know what I'm saying, we got a chance to like be around each other. And from that, we linked up. It was like me and, it was me and D-Miles. We family, right? We family, like they, they have somebody else in your room, you like, no, homie, no. Me and, D, me and D in the same room. And then Mama Miles would come and give us that, that but they wake up. Mama Miles would come and wake us up, we'll go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back in, wait, get up. I'm gonna get y'all to y'all head, y'all get all, yeah. But we was rolling, and then too, like, I, I listen, man, we was broke, I ain't had no money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I had to eat. all broke together. Look, look, I'm out you know there saying, you. oh, broke. So, you know, some of them AU terms, I'm out there with nothing in my you pocket. Know how it is. You know what I'm saying? We all got the same thing, bro. <laughs> bro. I'm out there like, uh, D Miles, you got a little, do you, got a little do something. Do you remember the long layover in Chicago we had where yes. we had to stay in the little, the, the messed up hotel? It was so hot in the room that we just sitting outside, had the door open. We just sitting there for like five hours, like just talking Damn, <laughs> and all this stuff. Like the AU trips used to be beyond, no, man. Like, on, and you then seeing the good players. It was crazy. Is like me being out on that circuit. I have never, I never played at that level before. Even though I had confidence in myself that I was good enough, but I had never played against like the Omar Cooks. Yeah. You know, what I man. I didn't even like them. Them kind of dudes didn't exist in right, the, yeah. the conference that I played in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but when I got out there, I held my own. But I did see a different level. You did. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like then what I was playing with at Richard. So I'm like, oh. So they, they made me even go back more and say, yo, I got a lot of work to do. But yeah. I was coming. Yeah. I was making waves, but I'm like, I got a lot of work to do. Because these dudes out here, uh, I was at Andre Barrett. Yeah, Andre um, Barrett. And these dudes Eddie Griffin, nice. Eddie, uh, Eddie Griffin. Gerald Wallace. I remember the Eddie Griffin D-Mouse showdown. 
Yeah, boy. Oh, <laughs> oh, in New York. Oh, in New York. Yes. I had like oh, 50 baby. or 60 yeah, or something. Bro, went, <laughs> went crazy on that. Bro, I, I was like, fan. I was in game that was, his, that was his one. I remember that. Bro, I remember it was them two. It was bro. always tip for tat when man, they was he, coming through. I seen, no, I seen the wrong. price on his head, man. He, like, he, he was the number one player. Oh, he dunked on him, dog. He was the number one player. I seen the price on his head. I just had to just go at him hard. It was disrespectful, bro. It was disrespectful, but it was great to watch. <laughs> it was great to watch, dog. I remember these stories, though. Like, man, we ain't talked about these stories, but man, it's probably been over 20 years. We talked about these Facts. stories and talked about just them days with my mama coming in, driving the van, and you know what I'm saying? And just all them days we had. Like I say, you came out of nowhere, and you was like, Outside of me, of course, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you was the best player on the team. Like, we needed you. It would have been a tougher summer for us if we didn't have you. And because you didn't come up in the circuit, all the rest of these guys, I done seen them for the last three years. Yeah. I was playing down and I was playing high. So they was catching up to me. And once they caught up to me from playing with QNIM, because that's the first group I played with, and like QNIM showed me a whole nother level yeah. of Illinois. Basketball, like I heard about the KGs, the Ronnie Fields, the uh, Benjis, all the great ones, you know, the Tim Hardaways, the uh, the Antoine Walkers, all the great ones from Chicago. But then when now I'm on, I'm in the high school level and I just come from playing two teams to see how Q them roll. Q looked like a superhero to me because he was the leader of their crew. They like, We the best AAU team in the world and Four of their players go to the same school. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and they start. Like, 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 all the way to young. I'm like, then my school is on strike the first two months. <laughs> like the whole August, old September, my school on strike. So they like, yeah, you might as well come to Whitney Hill. You gonna win a championship? We <laughs> winning a championship this year. Hey, we thought you know we had them, bro. We thought we so had. I was about to go because we weren't even going to school. I went to a tournament with them. We went going to school and shit. I was about to go and I trying to change my mind and stay. I was spooked. I <laughs> said I was spooked. I didn't want to go to Chicago, the big city, you know. Yeah. <laughs> too many buildings. You ain't like that one. Down <laughs> South too Illinois. Many buildings. Down South Illinois, I ain't like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, so tell me about you choosing, you know what I'm saying, the process with you choosing Marquette and when you, you know, that first year with you, with you sitting out, how was that? Yeah, so the, just the process of, and, and, of course, and of yeah. course, when you got the you you got the you got to meet uh, unfortunately Cordell Cordell Henry waiting yeah. out for him. That too, because you had Andre Brown and Amari Sara going to DePaul. Yeah, they did. Yeah, that's mm. right. You chose Marquette. Well, Marquette <laughs> chose me. So, as you know, like obviously, I you being my guy, you knew I was good, but yeah. the rest of the world still didn't see how good I was. So yeah. I only had really three scholarship offers. You know, what I'm saying I got offered from Illinois State. I got offered from Bradley. I got offered from Marquette. And DePaul was kind of like, I don't even count them as a full offer. Yeah. Because uh, Q Rich coach came in my house talking about some, yeah, you're not going to play until your junior year. I took the visit because my guy was at DePaul. I knew yeah. I wasn't going there. That's I'm like, that's my that's junior year, I'm Q planning on being in the league. Yeah. That's the same exact reason I took the visit. Because <laughs> my, was up cause my guy was over there. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and take this visit. And then I get there. And I, you know, they give you the sheet of what, you know, what you're going to do. And I see my host ain't Q Rich. I'm like, what is what? going on? Why am I here? <laughs> Q Rich heard I was there. was like, yo, you here, bro? I'm like, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> He's like, yo, I'm coming to get you. Like, so I had only had three scholarship offers pretty much. And like, for me, it was like, Coach Cream was so, like, when he came into my, my house, man, he was so like, like his passion for like turning that program around, his passion for making me like a, helping me grow into a man, like his past for, you know, you know, graduation, like all these things he had for me that no one never really told me before. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like I seen in his eyes that he wanted something for me and I, that maybe I didn't even know I can have myself. And I was like, for me, it was a no brainer. I knew to forget the school. I knew the, the coach and the man that I wanted, you know what I'm saying, to be around and to be with. So I committed to Marquette, but I committed to Tom Crean first. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So from there, it was, it was a no brainer. But Marquette was actually the first best college game that I ever went to. Mm -hmm. me, and, uh, me and Coach Adams went to a Marquette, Wisconsin college game. We mm -hmm. drove up and I never heard of Marquette before. Right. He was like, you wanna go to the game? I'm like, yeah. He's like, we gonna go to this Marquette, Wisconsin game. I'm like, my, my, my who? 
And we drove up, went to the game, and I seen C D L and them, they sucked too. Right. Yeah. But they had like fifteen points at halftime. <laughs> they was oh they was terrible. But I, I just was there like I never seen it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So to be able to see a college game, to be able to like, you know what I'm saying, be exposed to a different college that I didn't even know that was right up the street yeah. from the crib. And uh, so when they started recruiting me, like I started, like I was looking even more, like, you know, when he's on the circuit, yeah. I see Marquette, the, yeah. you know, the little polos, and yeah. I see them in all my games. I'm like, okay. That's true. Right. I didn't know that that was the first college game. That was the first, college, went went the first, the first college game I ever went to, too. Like, my uh, my auntie's best friend's son went uh, got a scholarship to Marquette, and he played for Marquette. And the first college game I went to was Marquette in St. Louis U. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the first college game. Yeah, that's what I, I seen it. Check like, that yeah. out. Yeah. yeah, that's the first college game same I seen with the more kid game. <laughs> so that, that was, you know what I'm saying, that was my, my process there, man. It was like, well, once I got there, and then like before that, so I committed, me and Odarte Blankson. I don't know right. you, Odarte, 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 right? Odarte. Odarte, Odarte, he played with us. Yeah. So Odarte, man, him committed together to Marquette. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because me and Odarte, actually me and Odarte played together when we was in like, Sixth grade, like we played in this little yeah. this little local uh, thing in Blue Island, right? Mm -hmm. And he was he was that dude, and I wouldn't get off. Yeah. I wouldn't Adorte even get off the bench. Adorte was nice. Yeah, he was nice. He like, was just too cool, though. Yeah, he was so <laughs> cool. He was so <laughs> cool. Well, I remember like being a like a little kid. I'm on I'm on the bench watching Adorte. He was like the man on the team. And then as we go to high school, like we competing against each other. He go to Hillcrest, I go to Richard. So we yeah. play against each other every time we play against each other. Both of us getting thirties, whatever. But he still was better than me. You know what I'm saying? In the, in the eyes of everybody, he was taller. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, he could shoot, he could do different stuff that I couldn't do at the time. So then we played Larry Butler together, we played with Illinois Warriors together. And so like we got this bond, we like, bro, like what you thinking? What you thinking? He was like, Man, Marquette, one of my teams. I'm like, bro, mine too. Let's go there. So we committed to Marquette together at the same time. Yeah. And around that time too, like I remember I was trying to pass my ACT. Mm -hmm. So I was, man, I took the ACT test about five times. Yeah. I had all kind of study halls, everything, bro. I could not pass it for nothing, man. So. Me either. <laughs> so oh, me Coach either. Cream was like, Coach Cream was like, yo, no matter what, we still, we still want you to come here. We still yeah. want you to be a part of this or whatever. So that meant so much to me, dog. So it was a no brainer, dog. That I just, I was like, I'm going to Marquette, man. They was riding with yeah, you. Let me just say about the, the ACT test, bro. Like literally, this is no lies told. Me and like our coach at, at, uh, at Whitney Young, you know, Whitney Young was a magnet school, all that education driven. So coach then, like, you know, a lot of kids, wait until they senior year to start taking the test and they not used to taking the test and all that. So Stan, Coach Stan deal with us, he had all of us start taking the test as sophomores. You know what I'm saying? Like sign up, we taking the test. Bro, I took the test and got like an 18 as a sophomore. Now mind you, this shows you that this test ain't really, you know, it's, it's, it's to me it's flawed because I didn't really take the test. I was just like, man, I'm just about to feel this right. joint out. I ain't really, I ain't got to take this for two years. Here, get up out of I'm there. just trying to put, fill out and then take me a quick nap and you feel me? Wait for the next bro, one. Bro, got an 18, bro. <laughs> I said, I'm never taking the Not test again. again. Never I'm again. never <laughs> taking it. You need a 17 and a 2.5. It's done. Like, you feel me? Like, and it was like, like you said, so some people like, you know what I'm saying? I've seen different, different things about like some people just get nervous at taking tests and it's not that they, you know what I'm saying, not smart or whatever, or some people have problems taking like a three hour test and it's just, you know what I'm saying, people, yeah. minds work different. It's like, to me, like that's a super, that long. <laughs> yeah, it's like an unfair, <laughs> I don't have, I'm just. And I'm talking about like, I had friends at Whitney Young, you know, that was like, like honor student that was like not doing well on these tests on yeah, ACTs so and SATs because themselves. it was pressure and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's like those tests are not like you know you needed to go to to go to that next the next level. Like yeah. I need this test. Exactly. I gotta pass this test. I was, taking, this, I was taking that joint every weekend. Bro. I was like, man, we wasting our time, bro. <laughs> bro and then like you know they combine your scores from, from, from right. the first test. So they'd be like, listen, all you gotta do is get a seventeen on this one and a seven. Yeah. I couldn't get that. It was too many fifteens going on on my. <laughs> hey, hey, we, hey, we in March Madness, and uh, you took Marquette to the to the tourney. Yeah. Tell us about that that experience. The school like Marquette, they probably ain't been to the tourney in a minute. <laughs> but the, <laughs> run, the, but the but the but y'all y'all took them to the tourney and made some noise like a run in the to the four. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like made some noise something. in the tournament. We did some. We had triple like, how double big in that, that thing too. <laughs> that was big, bro. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, going to Marquette when I went there, you know, Brian Water, who was now the Bradley B, B uh, head coach. B so Bradley, Brian, um, Brian Water was the man on the team at the time, and Cedell was still like. 
C-Dale. He, yeah. you know, hard head, stubborn C-Dale, not buying in yet, c yeah. Light skin syndrome. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the light skin syndrome. Yeah. He, he wasn't buying in yet. You know what I'm saying? So, they wasn't good. Hey, Crane used to be on here. Hey, all, uh, I've never, first of all, let me, I've never, I've never seen a coach on the player as much as I, as, as Coach Crane was on C-Dale. Yeah. Hey, to that, the point where C-Dale, I thought he was going, I'm like, he going to break, he ain't going to make it. <laughs> on him, bro. But so we would, that team was terrible, right? You know, from the standpoint of like talent wise, it just didn't have a lot of talent. They play hard, well coached, doesn't have a lot of talent. So I remember I sat out that whole year and I got a chance to like practice with the guys. And that's when I knew I can go to that. That's when I really knew I can go to the next level. Because yeah. honestly, I was I feel like I was better than everybody. Killing no, uh, yeah, CDL, was. CDL would tell me, bro. Like I would talk to I would talk to CDL like, you know, I'm in, I was in the league. No disrespect to my for my own teammates, but I was killing y'all. He was, he was, they, 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 they would put him on the scout team as oh, yeah. the best player. Uh, the best player. Like CDL would tell me every other every time, you know how much I talk to CDL every day, every week, all that. CDL would be like, bruh. <laughs> Like, bruh, like this, like D Wade out of here at the next year. Like, bruh, if he was playing this year, like we'd be so cold. Right. Like, bruh, he like this dude be murdering everybody. everybody. Like, we'd be playing again, like, cause he could practice. He just can't play. Like, dog, you see this dude uh, bro. practice? So, like, he <laughs> yeah, didn't do anything. Bro, so at that point, like, now I'm like, oh, I can go to, the, you know, I don't know. It's your game. Like, like, it's your, every oh, practice, yeah, it's your game know. time. But, like, one thing Coach Crane did to me, too, like, he'll bring in, like, so, like, say Doc Rivers come in town, they playing the Bucks. Doc Rivers would come in, he'd come to our practice, he'd teach me something, he'd come and talk to me. Like, everybody who came in, Coach Crane made sure I got FaceTime with them. You know, saying so he was, I didn't know he was molding me, you know, for something bigger. Yeah. So, when I got a chance the next year to finally take the court, you know, obviously I was just excited to play, but like right away, I'm 30 balls. Boom, boom. I'm like, wait, hold on. Right. Hold on. You know what I'm saying? In college? Like, so well, yeah. you know, in college, yeah, I'm 30, 30 balls college. right off first game, 30. I'm like, oh, you know what I'm saying? So like, but but the summer before that, man, we worked so hard, dog. And I'm telling you, anybody you asked Marquette, Coach Cream was a madman that summer. After we looked, that team didn't go, that team got invited to the NIT. He said, no, we're not taking the bid to go to NIT. We gonna work. Bro, he worked us so hard to the point where, like, before every workout, your heart is just beating real fast. You don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> you listening to you up. You know, we had the little sparrow st uh, staircase. You listening. You hear him going off. You're like, dang, he mad today. But he was like, he was building something in us. He, you know, saying for us to go from nothing to something, like, we had to have this toughness, you know, this mental toughness that was stronger than anything. And he was building something else, but, bro. He worked us so hard that once I got in the games, bro, the games was a breeze. Right. You know, like 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 Chance, this is a breeze, big fella. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we got out there, man, we just slowly, like, see, Dale started to buy in, and <laughs> he started hooping. My, yeah. my 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 first year playing C Dells last year, he was hooping, bro. Like he was a he was a I was the most talented player on our team, but C Dell was the best player on our team. Yeah. And we went to the tournament that first year. Like we we got ourselves in the position where we was the fifth seed in the tournament. You know what I'm saying? We feeling good. Marquette ain't been here in a while. Yeah. Me and C Dell from the crib, we didn't build something. Mm -hmm. We we talking a lot of stuff. We get smacked first game. <laughs> that 12-5 yeah. seed, <laughs> they smack us, but we built something. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So who like, was that? Who was that smack that? Man, who was that? I don't even know, bro. They was a 12 seed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we even know who they was. We was focused on the next round, which was Kentucky. We like, yo, we gonna play Kentucky. We just oh, think we about to yeah, stay 12 seed. We like, we I, got this. Yeah, act like y'all been there before. Yeah, we thought we've been there. You know what I'm saying? They, we, we got a rude awakening. Madness of March. So we, we so we had started building some. You know what I'm saying? We got to the tournament that year, and then the next year come back. And like you know what I'm saying? Like obviously I'm coming back. Uh, we got a lot of like incoming freshmen coming in. Um, Diener came, like Diener, you know, like mm -hmm. Diener, Steve Novak. Like we got these good young guys coming in. And like, we just kept building, man, to the point where, you know, obviously we went to the final four, but like the work that we put in behind the scenes was like to build that, that you know, that school to where it is today. It was tough, bro, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But like, it was worth it, obviously, but you know what I'm saying? Just the same thing, just, little, just like Richard, just like, you know, AU, like I always had to make my way and people still didn't give me like my due and that just kept driving me, you know what I'm saying? I was like, all right, you know what I'm saying? Like, they don't get my due, Kentucky, take this triple-double. Yeah. You, <laughs> you know what I mean? What y'all want? What, what yeah. else can I do, you know what I'm saying, to let y'all know that I'm for real? But uh, yeah, it was good, dog. What was that, that, do you remember that key moment where that season kind of turned, where y'all made that run to go to the Final Four? Um, yeah, we got in the conference tournament, we got first game, we number one seed, we got smacked. <laughs> smacked. I had a terrible game, bro. I had like 10 turnovers. I had a triple double the wrong way. Ooh. And boy, when I tell you, all we had was practice time. And Coach Green <laughs> was on us, dog. He lit in tours. 
But we needed that. You know what I'm saying? We going needed into that. the tournament. Yeah, yeah we needed that. Because, like, last time we was in the tournament, we went in with a big head. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We gonna, mm -hmm. we got this. This time we went in nervous. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We was the third seed going in, but we was we was, we was nervous of like what what could happen. Right. Yeah. So, but that was a turning point when we got to that conference tournament. We got smacked by the the, the last seed in the tournament, the eighth seed or whatever case may be, and uh, we got our mind right, got our game together, went to that tournament and did work. Yeah. So so talk about when you got. After that, obviously, you know, had the great run. Then you get drafted by Miami, like one of the best drafts ever. Yeah, yeah. but but wait, let's talk, let's talk about before that. Let's talk about like our conversations that we had. So right, so like I'm going through that year, right, and like of course I want to go to Lee, but still I'm like no one is really talking about me like that, right? Uh -huh. So I'm on the phone with Q. And we just talking about the league and everything. I'm living through y'all, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying, man? What y'all out there doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm living through y'all. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, 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 I'm want this. I want that action. But uh, Q told me one day, he was like, bro, he's like, I just went into the, you know, saying the, the, uh, the office yeah. and your name draft was on the board. draft board. I was like, what? Yeah. He's like, yeah, bro. Like, you one of the top, uh, one of yeah. the top guards. I'm like, for real? Yeah. I'm like, you think I can come out? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we talking, we going back and forth. And that's for me, like, outside of like, I never talked about with Coach Crane. Like, we, we never talked about the NBA. We was focused on college, but like on this other end, I had, you know, I had a guy in the league, so I'm like, he giving me this confidence that, yeah. bro, you can play at this, this level, you can play at this league, whatever. So I'm like, cool, <laughs> let me just get through this tournament and then I'm out, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But like, you know, before I even got to the point of entering the draft, like, you know, it was, it was good, it was big for me to be able to have, you know, somebody that I was close to, like to tell me like yeah. what the NBA level was about, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Without, you know, Coach Crean knowing about it. Right. Yeah. He wasn't playing yeah. it. We were focused on Marquette. We're talking about the NBA later. You had your own agent early. Yeah, I, yeah, I had my early. I had a little inside track early. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so then, you know, obviously I go through that. We go to the Final Four. And I still haven't had this conversation with Coach Crean yet because, like, you know what I mean? Like, he was like a father figure to me. And I'm a little nervous to tell him, like, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> so... We got to go to the Wooden Awards. Yeah. We got to go to John Wooden Awards. I'm one of the finalists, and it's in L.A. And I'm nervous because, like, I talked to my assistant coach, uh, Dwayne Stevens, who's now assistant coach at uh, Michigan State. Right, right. And I talked to him. He's like, yo, you got to have a conversation with him, D. You got to let him know you gone. I'm like, all right. So we sitting on the plane the whole ride together. I, I want to say it, but I'm nervous. I'm like, <laughs> I, I know your personality, so I know you. Oh, you know how quiet I was. Like, you, know, bro. you know what I'm saying? So we the whole five hour flight. I don't say nothing to him, bro. So we land in LA, and he, like before I went to my room, he was like, "Yo, he's like, come here, let me have a moment with you." And he like eased my mind. He was like, "We out here in LA. I'm gonna do a little research." You know, he's like, "Our goal was always that you'd be a lottery pick." He's like, "So if I'm here, you're gonna be a lottery pick." I, I'm hold true to my word. I have you pack your bags. Cause he always told me, if you're gonna be a lottery pick, I have you pack your bags, yeah. son. Because yeah. the year before, I act like I wanted to leave the school <laughs> because they was running us too hard. Right. He was like, son, you're not ready. Right. He's like, yeah. he like, you came here to be a lottery pick. You ain't come here to, to, to go in a late first round. Right. So we got to LA. He told me that eased my mind. You know what I'm saying? I'm out here to Wooden Woods. I'm out there with TJ Ford, David West, um, Nick Collis, Nick Collison, uh, Hollis Price. Hollis Price. Um, that was our five finals or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So I'm out there jacking with them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we going to the league. You know, yeah. I'm talking all right, that league right. talk. <laughs> really, I don't really know yeah. if I'm going yet. I'm yeah. still nervous to, to have a real conversation. Right. Um, but then we out there and um, I wound up calling Q. Y'all yeah. was gone. Y'all was on the road. And uh, Rio, he was like, yo, I'm gonna send Rio to pick you up. You know what I'm saying, yeah. whatever. So Rio come pick me up, take me to TGI Fridays, so it would've been like the spot. Yeah. Yeah. Johnson, 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 Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Sierra in LA, they know. Yeah. So he's like, know. he was like, yo, you know, he got you. So then we go there, we hang out in TGI Fridays, and then we go back to Q Crib, right? So we at Q Crib, we chill, we, boy, we bowl, we do some bowling and all that, and then we go back to Q Crib, and like, I get a chance to go in this uh, closet. Oh yeah. That's go in right. Q Closet. You know, know what I mean? I, I'm with Lee Neen right now, but at the time, you know what I mean? Q and them, you guys is with Jordan. And I remember going in this closet, bro, and I'm just in there like, ha ah. <laughs> Like the music came up. <laughs> so I'm talking to Q, you know, I might have I hinted at something, but you know, I'm quiet, I ain't really sitting there. Q was like, man, go in there and grab you something, you know, on the phone. He's like, go grab you something, man. Before I was in that one, I was in that closet. Like, you was shopping. <laughs> and then, like, the thing was, too, like, all the all cute, he was number three. Like, I was number three, so everything had my number yeah, on it, too. <laughs> all the sneaks had my number on it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I took, I, I only had, like, a certain a certain amount I could take back. So I packed a couple pairs of shoes, a couple sweatsuits, <laughs> and took them back to Marquette. You know what I'm saying? So I get back to campus. 
I'm stunned. <laughs> I put on a Jordan sweatsuit right away. They uh, made these for me. You see what? my number? Uh, <laughs> look, I come back to my team and I was like, yeah, they want me. <laughs> I'm like, they want me. <laughs> you know, I'm walking on campus stunned. It ain't mine at all, but they don't know. You know so I'm pointing at my shoe with the three on it like, you see me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been crying if I see that. Yo, I paid to nothing. see that. But like the thing what was cool, man, before I got there, so we, we go through LA, bro. I, I get like last in the wooden awards. I'm like fifth. I was I was shocked, honestly. <laughs> I was shocked that I was fifth. I'm like fifth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm like, damn, Hollis Price. Okay, hey, shout out to HP, yo, man. You know he was on my team at Nike Camp. Yeah, yeah, I'm not Hollis, 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 he was nice. Yeah, though. Hollis he was nice. Price from New Orleans, hey, Hollis. Hollis. Oklahoma, man. Hollis Hollis was was nice. Nice. He was nice. He was nice. He was nice. But Hollis. me and Hollis was like fourth, fifth. We looked at each other like, man, this some boys. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like, so we go through that, bro. Then we go back. I go back to uh, Milwaukee, coach. Like we got to get back. I got to go to class. Right. Forget all this. You got to yeah. go to class. So we get back, and coach about to drop me off at my little apartment because I had to move off campus because I had a son. Zaire mm-hmm. was born right. when I was in school. So I'm about to get out the car, and I still ain't really <laughs> told him like, coach, I'm out. I don't care what, but I'm yeah. out. And then like I'm about to get out the car, and he was like, yo, wait, hold on. And he put his hand out, and he was in the. And he was just like, good luck. He's like, I'll be over to help you pack your bags. Mm. Mm. That's, that's what's he's up. like, you out of here. I was like, oh! He's like, but you gonna finish school, you ain't gonna tell nobody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You going to class, you gonna finish, you ain't gonna tell nobody this Word. and that. You know what I'm saying? So that was the process and the whole journey before I got a chance to get to the draft and get to my workouts and um, you know, and eventually get drafted by the Heat. Straight up, like you was one of the best drafts ever. Like with Melo, with LeBron, and you hold it your own through your career. What you thought about Miami picking you up? Like, like it was a shuffle. You knew there was all these superstar players in this, yeah, in this draft. Yeah, and this draft could be one of the most special drafts ever. But like you say, you won the. It was yeah, like I, iffy I, on you. They right. were like, oh, he he maybe can be good. Bro, but they he was like LeBron and Melo. Like D Wade can go from four to twenty. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. They said you won Darko Mid. I ain't Darko Milicic. I won Melo. I won LeBron. Won so outside that, of that, so now you can go Chris from four Bosch. to twenty. Even, no, even Chris, like I mean, I, I had heard about Chris, but we didn't know. I didn't know how high Chris was gonna go. He was young. He was talented, but you know, didn't really know. But all I know is it was like D Wade can go anywhere from four to twenty. So I'm at the yeah. draft, like. Well, I guess we're going to see what's going to happen. Right, but yeah. I did think that I was going to Chicago. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Chicago had the uh, seven pick. Yeah. And, I, you know, I'm, I worked out for the Bulls twice. Yeah. It was a lot of chatter about me going to the Bulls. Uh, they needed a guard. You know, that's when uh, the summer after uh, Jay Will had the, the motorcycle uh, accident. Right. So they had just lost him as the PG. They needed yeah. a guard. So I'm like, cool. Like, I'm going to Chicago. So I'm actually kind of sitting there like, I'm going seven. You right. know what I'm saying? So uh, my my agent, uh, Henry Thomas, he had Chris and me, yeah. Chris Bosch and me. So, you know, Chris get draft fourth. So he go to Chris' table. Right. Chris get draft fourth. And I'm sitting I'm like, yeah, Chris, boy, all right, boy. Like, you know like, what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how I was when he got picked before me, except I had a longer wait. Yeah, a little longer, yeah. A little longer, yeah. Little bit longer, little longer. Yeah. But you like, you got dapping him up like, yeah, dude. All right, my boy. Come on, shake up. Get the- yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Man, so then I'm sitting there, I'm chilling. And then my agent, you know, Hank coming and he sit right here. And um, but I'm waiting because I'm I'm going seven. I'm sitting there like, okay, who next? Miami got five. And he, you know, he's like, yo, D, what's up? He's like, uh, Miami about to take you at five. I say, I lost everything went numb. <laughs> everything went numb, bro. Like you know, what I'm saying like my my everything that I've been through, just like I'm like I'm about to be the fifth pick in the draft. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying everything that I've been through this point, like now I'm about to be picked bro, fifth in the went, draft. Yeah. Like it was crazy, bro. So like I just remember like. I, I never been in Miami before. Obviously, like I worked out here, but like I came in real late at night and left out. Yeah, you know right how the workouts be. Yeah, you leave right you after. Leave the right workout. after. So I didn't know nothing about and, Miami. And, 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 and we wasn't one of them dudes that coming out that was active, got people in the city to right. take you out. Wasn't yeah. like that. No, we in the yeah. hotel. You in the hotel. Back. You work out, gone. You no, know what I'm saying? So yeah. I ain't know nothing about Miami, bro. I get drafted in Miami. I go in the back. I talk to Pat, and only thing I asked Pat was, "Can I get number three? And he was yeah. like, "No." <laughs> Uh, it's a veteran got it you gotta get another number yeah. that's the only thing i remember and i was like all right so like you know what i'm saying i ain't really know what to say i'm like just pat rowdy i'm like yeah. uh, can i get number three uh and so then the journey began bro i came down here the next day and i remember flying in bro and like looking at the water you know what i'm saying like right, looking at man. the seat and i'm like what is this i'm from chicago i just <laughs> left milwaukee yeah <laughs> what is this you know what I'm saying? I'm walking out, I get out, and I see people got little dogs walking with Louis Vuitton bags and yeah. clothes on. I'm like, what 
is going? What is right. this? Yeah. You know what kind of city is this? So it was like, man, it blew my mind. Like being here was like, it was like a foreign country. It was bizarre to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like something you only hear about. People speaking Spanish, different languages right. and stuff right, like that. I'm different type you. of cultures, yeah. foods, everything. Everything, bro. It was like you didn't know the world. All bro. I knew was soul food. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? Like point me to, you know what I'm saying, the, the pork chops with yeah. the gravy and right. point me to the fried chicken. Like I don't know nothing about all this, you know, Cuban no food and, and all that stuff. Nothing, bro. Yeah. So I came down here. It was a shell shock. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So the only thing I did was I just poured myself, I just put my head down and went to work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even get involved in in everything, but I put my head down and went to work. You know what I'm saying? But like as I sit here right now, I'm thinking back to the first time that I came down here with you guys in the Zo Summer Group. Y'all remember that? Yeah, yeah. Zo Summer Group was right after my uh first uh we had came from Orlando and we had did uh we had uh summer league. Yeah. And I, I twisted my ankle so I couldn't play in the Zo Summer yeah, Group. I remember that. But I remember being here with y'all I was on the bench. And I was like, but this was my with bro, the 5XL polo. You already know. I thought, hey, I thought, and I had like a little, uh, the hat. I had like a no, this one, uh, when everybody's oh, yeah, rocking yeah. Uh, headbands. The headbands. That's when you're rocking the headbands off the court now. Off the court. It was like a thing. And I remember sitting here, that was my, I made it to, that was my first, like, yo, I'm in the lead moment. Yeah. Like, we sitting on the bench. We had the summer groove. I'm next to both of y'all. I'm like, y'all, I'm next to my guys. I'm next to my boy. Yeah. In the, I'm in the league. Like, <laughs> I'm out there. I'm looking at everybody. I'm like, this is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We go out that night. We yeah. go to uh, Opium. Opium. Yeah. We go to that. Opium. Q got this big limo. And you know what Word. I'm saying? I'm like, yo, this is real. Like, I'm here. Like, y'all understand. Like, yeah. this is crazy to me, bro. No, we understand. We had the same, <laughs> same, same like, thing. Yeah. We had a chicken pox, but you know. Yeah, I missed oh, yeah, the same thing. Same thing. I missed the first round. I missed the first round, but I caught the second round. I caught the danger. I couldn't wait till next year. I just remember, bro. I remember, bro. And I remember just like, we, we going out. I remember having my beater. I remember Q, like, you know, Q go out. He take his shirt off quick. You know Q. He yeah. want to show all his muscles and everything. Yeah. So we in the club. Q got his beater on. So I, you know, I take mine off. I got yeah. my beater on. We in there. I I meet uh, the first time I met Eddie Jones, first yeah. time I met Zoe, first time I met everybody, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And uh, I remember Q was telling me, he's like, yo, because I wanted into going out, like, you know, yeah. I was into the church thing, yeah. I had a family young, I was married. Yeah. Yeah. And Q was like, yo, this is your city. I and couldn't believe it. He's like, yo, every, every Sunday. <laughs> In your city, this is what's going down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I remember just being a kid, like eyes just buck. You know what I'm saying? Wow, like, whole wow. another world, whole another world, bro. That uh, you play with like Hall of Famers and and legends. Like you play from Lamar Odom, Antoine Walker. Shaq, Zoe, like you said, Eddie Jones, GP. LeBron, GP, White GP, Chocolate. White Chocolate. Uh, like like Chris Bias, Mike Miller, like you can go on and on and on from all them minds that you got something to to take a piece of them off. You know, you can rarely get in the gym and get with somebody and kind of get a piece of their IQ and kind of add it to your stuff, but you got the opportunity to play with a lot of players. What is something that one of them players that you got off of them or, or two of them that you got from them that you, like, this stuck with me longer than any other thing that stuck with me with any other player? Probably the three, the three individual players would be Shaq, Zo, and LeBron. Was probably the three I took the most from Shaq. I took the way that he was like. I was so I was a I was so quiet. I was an introvert. Like I didn't talk much. I didn't let my personality show. Shaq kind of opened me up. You know what I'm saying? When he gave me the nickname Flash, and you know what I'm saying? Like I bought into the Flash character, mm -hmm. and like he started opening me up. So I started being more like you know. So I started speaking for myself. Yeah. I started saying what I wanted. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I, I started being a little, I had a little more pizzazz to my Leader. to myself. Yeah. So he kind of brought that side out of me. Yeah. You know, Alonzo mm -hmm. brought out the, y'all know Zoe, he brought out the, you know, you got to take care of your body. Yeah. You need a chef. You need a this. You need yeah. a that. You yeah. need a size. Like, so eventually once I started to listen, because at yeah. first I was young, I'm like, I don't need yeah. none of that. Once I started listening, I was like, okay. Zoe said, I got to do this. I got to do that because my body, you know what I'm saying, this right here, this is everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. if this don't go right there, you know, like I can make that investment because this gonna help me make this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, like if I make an investment of spending 500K over, over my, on my body with all this stuff, it's gonna help me make millions of dollars it's later. Help make so eventually Zo was important, you know, in my life. And then well, Brian, just being around him, I've never seen nobody work as hard as he did. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, from the standpoint of like on his body and then how like, 
how he played in the games and how he practiced. Yeah, like I, you know, I didn't. I never was a good practice player. I ain't lie to you. I was, I was terrible. If they, if they gave his contracts out of being a practice player, I would have been the lowest paid person in the league. Straight up, Coach Hammond. We just seen him, and he was like, "Man, when I first seen you, when I seen you practice, he was like, you was all out of shape enough. I was like, oh, sh- he straight out of high school, he ain't gonna be shit.' Right. He you said. Who? Then we got to the games. He said he always used to tap Av and Gentry like, hey. Put the miles in. <laughs> Put the miles in. He was in. a gamer. You know what I'm yeah, saying? So yeah. just the, the practice, I never could get with the camps. Remember how I used to come off camp and I used to see how I used to be like, yeah, I ain't do nothing in camp. <laughs> everybody out there gunning and I just don't want to be into, involved in that. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So Yeah. So I got, that was a, for me saying that with Brian was like up close in person was like, this is a, it's a different level. You know what I'm saying? Than like you normally see. So those three guys kind of opened my my mind up to something different than I than I actually seen on a daily basis every you know every every time. So those are probably the three. You play like your first championship. You had Antoine Walker, Gary Payton, White Chocolate, Shaq, Zoe. Like you had, Ooh. like you grew up like watching right them. Be right, <laughs> be right, be right, be right, be right, right, be right, 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 Watching them yeah. to be on the like Antoine Walker's from Chicago, yeah. Skill O'Neal. We watch Kazam. <laughs> that's not a shot, Shaq. That's not a shot, Shaq. That's not a shot, Shaq. That's not a shot. But, but uh, we grew up watching Blue Chips, like you said, and we we grew up seeing them players. And your first championship to go through that and win a championship with them players. What did that mean to you? That was that was un, that was unreal, bro. You know what I mean? First of all, to be you know, when Coach, when, when Rouse made that move to bring everybody in, like, yeah. first of all, man, my first year, like, I was just having fun. Yeah. I'm a kid in the NBA, I'm playing with LO, one of the coolest dudes in the league, bro. Yeah, no one way. of the coolest dudes <laughs> in the world. Ever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just, I'm just happy to be here, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, Joseph. You know what I'm saying? Always I'm, happy. Always happy, <laughs> always putting you on game. Yeah. I love sitting by him on the plane. Oh. Put me on so much script, bro. All the time. And I play with Karan, my guy, CB. Yeah, he, CB. He taught uh-huh. me other things away from the game of how to be professional, how to be this, you know. So I had like, I had guys that was like, you know, cool and like dope. And we was just having fun. We went from being a terrible team to a good team at some point. And I just enjoyed being in the NBA, making some noise. And then trade happened, Shaq come to Miami. Everything oh, changes. Yeah. My mama world changes. Crying? Yeah. Hey, you we, Karan was a killer. Bro, I don't know if you remember. Bro, Larry <laughs> Butler, had, listen, we about to play Karan in the AAU, right? Mm. Larry Butler have a meeting with the team, you know, in the hotel before we go play him. He started telling us about Karan and, like, he done went to jail and all kind of stuff about I'm nervous now. Yeah. I'm Now I'm nervous a little he's bit. He's talking about, people. He, like, yeah, he's talking about he's a real killer. <laughs> like, he in jail because he didn't, he didn't probably shank somebody. Like, I, you know what I mean? I'm like, so now we about to go play this man. And then he had a deep voice. You know what I mean? Like I bumped into him, he's like, hey. I was like, oh. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> You know, C B got that uncle look. Hey, you yeah. can ride. He grew up. Racine out there. can ride. Racine was kind of was Man, crazy. He was, boy. <laughs> so like I, so then I'm coming to the league. I'm like, I don't really know. But then he, he was so cool, man. So he took me on him, you know, first day, he took me on his wing, bro, right away, which was dope. You know what I'm saying? So like to be able to play on like to be able to go from that to like then the next thing, it was like, hey, Shaq, Shaq here, yeah. it's time to win the championship. I'm like, wait, wait, what? Right now? <laughs> I just got here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but instantly. You know how it go. Yeah. You gotta do what you gotta do. up in the big truck and said what he said. Big brother said, you gonna bring a championship to Miami? <laughs> I gotta put some work in, like, I, I gotta added, go. Y'all added veteran pieces with you and D Wright being the babies on that team, man. Like. I just thought that was an amazing yeah, championship for you, had to win. Anderson, man, Anderson. for you to win. Anderson, man, for you to win MVP for them veteran players to be in the point of their career to, to be excited for you, not to be selfish. And y'all look like a whole team. I remember an interview you did, and you was like, "Man, they was looking at us when Zoe dunked in and hollered like the game over with. We winning." And yeah. you and y'all was feeling like, "Oh no, nah, we finna win the championship now. Nah, like we finna come back and we got them." So that's a Hey look though, I got a crazy story. Like during that run, do you remember the Chicago series when y'all came to my crib and y'all had a one look, bro? So (laughs) true story. (laughs) So so (laughs) you know this when I had the uh the 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 big house out in Chicago, out south. The big house. Yeah, with the the indoor pool. (laughs) Let's not not get it twisted. It was an indoor pool. pool. So look, so look. 
you know, we 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 out there. Wait, when somebody started a story with you, you know, know. <laughs> I just beat some shit. You know, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so we kicking it, whatever. D D Wade and I'm like, yeah, bro. So so what, what you doing? I'm like I'm like, man, bro. I'm about to. I told him I'm like I'm having like a little barbecue slash party. I'm like, look, bro. I know y'all play early tomorrow. Like he's like, I don't know. It's cool. You know, we just gonna slide through for a minute and get up out of there, right? Bruh, and mind you, D. Wright wasn't even playing. He wasn't active. D. Wright in a suit, but clearly, D. Wade is part of one half of the show. You feel me? He's one half of the show. Bruh, long story short, they ain't leave the crib to daylight. Literally, daylight. <laughs> so, they get to the, I'm, I'm sitting there the next day. I pull up, I'm, about, I'm like, I'm watch the game, see here what. Dog, they got blasted. <laughs> He played horrible. D. Wright couldn't even sit on the bench. No, he, he was, he in the was back. throwing up he in the come back. Out. He didn't even get to come out to the to the bench and sit on the bench in the suit the night. Like I, I, did, I did not do him. How many times not throughout unless, the night was I saying, "Hey, I need to go ahead and go." Telling, he kept they telling like, us nah. to leave. They like, no, no, we good, we good. We good. I'm like, I'm like, bro. I think y'all should go right now. Like, y'all gotta get up early. Y'all gotta early. No, no, no. We good. We good. Like, I'm like, they like it's the Bulls, bro. We good, bro. Laced them. I was sitting there like, Rio them looking at me like, bruh, this our fault. Like, <laughs> yeah, bro. Well, we said we had a good time. We got, hey, we got great stories. <laughs> we ain't never experienced nothing like that, bro. Me and me and D, me and D, uh, D Wright was like, no, nah, no, nah, we we just gonna stay a little longer. A little longer turned to, bro, it's like five, bro. Like, <laughs> sun coming, bro. bro, we gotta go. We got a one o'clock game. <laughs> We had a good time. I, uh, you just passed Michael Jordan up for the uh, Crazy. for for the blocks. I want to know what is it, like a thousand and two hundred or something. Is it? I can't remember the number. Thousand fifty two. Fifty two. All right. Yeah. So so you just passed Michael Jordan up out of the thousand and fifty two you passed up. <laughs> how many of them is get that shit out of here? After the block, because I remember I played y'all and I went to the old. And I heard her get that shit out of her. I couldn't wait to come back and get your shit. And remember, I said to the back to you, get that shit out. Y'all yeah, was kicking yeah. my ass. Too. Yeah, you got my thing. That was my. That was my. That was my thing. I'm getting some. I'm getting that shit so, out of here. So out of the thousand, how many? Came behind that block is a get that shit out of her. I said about uh. 1,050. <laughs> Two of them I probably didn't say because you know, I probably, you know, fucked yeah, up and got you it. You said it in your mind. Yeah, but, I, but you know, every time I block somebody, especially somebody bigger than me, if you were bigger than me, get that shit out of here was coming right away, yeah. right? So, uh, but y'all know, I take I take pride in that because, you know, I'm 6'4 on a good day with the right yeah. orthotics and the right sneakers on. <laughs> with the right yeah. orthotics. With the right orthotics and the right sneakers and the, the two pair socks. In the back. <laughs> Uh, so I take pride in that, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I've always taken pride in it, you know, from, from all the way back to my dad, when my dad was my coach for telling me to be more than just, you know, a one dimensional player. Yeah. You know what I mean? I always try to bring like multiple things to the team. And like, you know, for me, like, and you know this, cause you played with me before. Yeah. I've not, I haven't always, like people, people ask me, how can you, how can you, you know, take a backseat to this guy? Or how can you come off the bench at this point? How can you, I yeah. haven't always been a star player. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I've, 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 I've always had to figure out a way to be, you to be on the court. You, got. you know what I'm saying? Like I right, D-Mouth, a star player, he gonna get the ball. How can I figure out a way yeah. to still make it and do something? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's kind of how I've been my whole life. Now I became that guy that got all the shots, that got the ball all the time, but that wasn't always my role. Yeah. So I've always tried to master whatever role, yeah. you know, I've been in. So for me to be able to do multiple things on the floor, dog, and to be able to have that record of the most blocks overall, like that's that's big for me. Yeah, I, th I think up. I think what you said just speaks exactly to what like people, cause like I mean I don't think people talk about it enough or acknowledge it enough. Like what you did in allowing LeBron to come here when he came and y'all formed the big three and all that. Like like that was unbelievable and all that. But like people don't understand the sacrifice you had to make. Like this was you know what I'm saying. This is absolutely way counting your team, your franchise, your everything. And you open the doors knowing that this is LeBron. At, at some point, he's going to be the bigger entity. And it's like, for you to be able to do that, like, that take, like, a, a level of being humble. And like you said, like, then when you say that, like you said, that I wasn't always God makes it kind of be like, okay, that makes it a little more easy. But even still, like, people still who weren't the guy or whatever, when they get that, it, I'm not about to relinquish it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, if no. I have a choice to say no to it or whatever, like, right. and you had that choice, so, like, 
just talk about like how you was able to do that and what what you know made you be able to make that decision because like you know how it is like dudes would be like nah I don't want to come over here and take up my sign like yeah. nah this my you know what I mean and like you did that as like as graceful as anybody and like you know what I'm saying the, and I think he acknowledges it and knows what it was but I think that doesn't get shined on enough to me in my opinion is like because like that that made everything be able to happen. If you don't, if you don't say, "Hey, yeah, it could happen." Pat could still bring them in, but it's gonna be just, just head bumping the whole time. But like with you, the way you took it, it made everything possible. You know what? Like I've, I've always been secure, like in who I am. Like you know, what I'm saying like in, in the, in the space that I walk in and I live in, like I'm secure in my manhood of who I am, bro. You mm -hmm. know, I know who I am, and you know, I, mean, I don't try to be nobody else. I, I'm, I'm, I'm me at all times so i'm secure in that you know what i'm saying so with brian coming down here like I, I wasn't worried about necessarily him taking my shine or taking this and that like i i'm i'm, I'm it's only one d way you right. know what i'm saying like and not saying from the standpoint like oh from a from a basketball standpoint just from overall mm -hmm. you know I, so i was comfortable in that ultimately for me man what it came down to was me sitting back and i won a championship in 2006 and i could have rode off i could have rode off in the sunset and won that one championship and just tried to get as much statistical things that I can get, right. you know, Fair but enough. ultimately, bro, I just wanted to win. Mm -hmm. And this league, it was getting challenging. It was getting tougher. Once once uh, KG and Ray Allen and Paul Pierce and Ronald, once they linked up, bro, the league changed. Yeah. Oh, you know, we the, got put out yeah, together. We the was, league I, changed, I was, bro. I was, yeah. And you won, you won competing, you won winning with just one star player. No more. The league had changed, and oh, no. I knew it. When we seen it happen that summer, everybody knows shit just got real. It got real. So I, <laughs> listen, I, and I said after we lost to, to them, you know they beat us. I ain't going out like this. I said, no I, more. I said I remember. this would be the last time I get put out in the first round, yeah. man. I'm not doing this no more. It was Kobe. Kobe and them was loaded up with Gasol and Bynum. Kobe them won two championships in a row. Then you had KG and them loaded up with Paul <laughs> and Ray Allen and. So right. think about how how we how I'm thinking now. You know then what I'm saying? Rondo came out of nowhere and started to be special. It, it, it really got ugly. So now you know how this league go. Years go fast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You go from this young superstar, this young pup, and next thing you know, now you're 27, 28. 30 is right around the corner. And it, it wasn't like it is today when now 30 is like whatever. 30 right. back then was like, you oh, you on your way out. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. for me, I was like, man, like this move got to be made. Like I got to do something now before – I'm in my 30s, and I mm -hmm. and I haven't experienced it again. Because once, I know everybody, like, if you never won it, like, you want to win it. But once you have won it, you know what that feeling is like. And you don't get that again, bro. It, it It's worse. Right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, for me, I was like, you know what, bro? Like, for me, it's all about winning. I play a team sport. Individually, yeah. I'm secure in who I am. I know what I can do. I know what I bring. But I play a team sport. I want team success. Yeah. And it so happened that LeBron, myself, Chris Bosh, and a lot of others was free agents at the same time. Yeah. I, so I, I sit here to you guys, and I promise, right hand up, if it was a Bible here, I put it there, I never thought me and LeBron would play together. Yeah. Never thought it was possible. People think we had this thing this whole planned plan, out. This, this wasn't no plan. Da Vinci code. Bro, this was too good. <laughs> right, they thought we had like, <laughs> they thought this was, this started in 2003. Like, hey, meetings, hey, hey, in 2010, <laughs> we gonna play together. Like, we, we you don't know this. Hey, y'all was Illuminati for about two years, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I thought y'all were Illuminati for about two years, bro. Y'all have no secret meetings. <laughs> I'm like, what they talking about? <laughs> all these, all these conversations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't, even though, man, it was never about that. And then we got a chance to, like, sit down and be like, I think we both reach on our own, like, yo, I want more out of out of, out of, out of this career yeah. than what I'm what I'm experiencing now. Like, yeah, yeah, I got a scoring title. Yeah, I got a finals MVP. Yeah, yeah I got this, I got that. Brian got MVPs, he got scoring titles, this and that. And it's kind of like, that's not enough. Yeah. Like, you want more. Yeah. So, you know I mean? I, I remember the call. I remember going to my agent office, and he was like, yo, you know, LeBron and, uh, and Leon at the time was his agent. Like, they want to get on the call with us. I'm yeah. like, okay. <laughs> and I remember getting on the call, and I remember, you know, them act like, I remember talking to LeBron. He's like, yo, where your head at? And I'm like, my head isn't winning. Where your head at? He was like, same thing. And I was like, okay. Yeah. So what that mean? You know what right. I'm saying? And the conversation went from there yeah. to us saying, like, if you cool with it, I'm cool with it. Let's rock together. Yeah. I'm like, cool. Let Let's me, do it. Let me ask you this. Could it have been another team? Yeah. Oh, so it could have been another. Team. It could have been. So you know what I'm saying? Like it, we was, it wasn't just Miami that this could have worked in. It could have worked. Miami about. was the only. Well, if it, I don't know if it was. If it, I don't know, but I know at the time when we yeah. were trying to make a decision of what city we wanted to play in or what we wanted to be, like we had to keep our options open to these other 
Chicago was 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 on the top of both of our lists. Yeah. Um, so it was pretty much Chicago, Miami was on the top. But like you know, we took we we th- we looked at New York. Yeah. The possibility because if we gonna ride together, if we gonna play together. Let's see what these other cities got to offer. So yeah. Chicago at the time they had to offer, they had two max contracts. Yeah. And they had a young D Rose yeah. before the MVP Rose the yeah. season before. They had a Luau Dane. They had Noah. Yeah. They had you know saying so they had all these pieces. Yeah, so I'm like, that mm, crazy. In, the, in the city in Chicago in the biggest one of the biggest markets. Yeah, yeah. Man, crazy. Yeah. But then it was like ah, me, you, and D Rose. That's a lot. It's one ball. We yeah. all need it. Yeah. That may be too much. You know what I'm saying? I play defense though. Yeah, but we we thought it. Listen, thought about it. But then, <laughs> but then it was like, but then Miami, to their credit, they they did it to where they had enough money to get three max players. They, they messed the, the game up. They yeah. flushed the house. Yeah. So it was like, wait, we can get <laughs> somebody that, that, that else too. Oh, let's flush the toilet. Let's start all over. <laughs> start all over. So it was like cool. So then like we just trying to sit and decide. Like once it came down to like, okay, who else we would love to play with? And once it came down, we would love to play with like CB. Like we when we sit down and thought about this, what player can match up? Who matches us? Yeah. You know, saying Amari, man, Amari good, but man, we all we all alphas. Yeah. That ain't gonna work. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, egos may get in the way. Yeah. Who knows? So we, we had to sit down and think about this. Yeah. And when it came out to Miami was the only team that had enough money to get all three of us. Yeah. Every other team could have did two. Yeah. And but like once again the point was like, yo, C B is a perfect match. Perfect. Out of everybody else. Miami was, was it was a no brainer from there. He was perfect. Like I, I couldn't see too many other people fitting that void with you and, and LeBron. Yeah. That can kind of fit in, take take the shots that everybody gonna throw him. Because they was all they were doing, they were taking shots at him, and like other guys couldn't take that. Toronto Raptor Chris Bosh, monster ass, monster. Yo, if y'all hear that interference, it's because we live on location at uh at, at the D Way at the Wade Wade Manor here in Miami. <laughs> so you know it might be you know boats might be passing by, yachts and stuff yeah, like so that. Yeah, so y'all see me or, sweating or, or, on this camera, play. y'all know because I'm outside. Yeah, we got <laughs> choppers and planes and, uh, and everything. Ex, I'll be asking a few people to have this. Like you got a dope nickname, but don't nobody got counties named after them. Ooh, <laughs> you to be for to be oh, you hit me with that one. Shirt. You hit me with that one right there. Shirt. Nobody has a a county name after they got dope nicknames and stuff. And you I got know, a dope name. I, I like the flash. About it that way. I like the flash. Yeah, don't nobody get the county. People get a street Wade name. County? <laughs> what do you feel about when? How you felt about the first time you heard that and? What do you, do you like it? And <laughs> what do you feel about Clearly. it? Like, <laughs> do I like it? Like, uh, you know what's crazy, bro? Like, how did that work out like that? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, okay, I get drafted in Miami, Dade County. Right. All you gotta do is change one letter in his yeah, way. County. Like, how does that work out man, that way? You know what I'm saying? That's it was in the scripture. Yeah. It was in the scripture. Big, man. That's big, the big man, man set it up. So like, when I first heard it, like, I, you know, I thought it was cool. I'm like, oh, that's cool right there. But then, like, once I start seeing billboards, and once I yeah. start seeing street, like, they got little things, like, in certain yeah. places, like, you're entering, welcome to Wade County. Like, yeah. I start seeing all this like, stuff. I'm like, oh, this is, this is next level right, right here. the people. You the people <laughs> champ. The people, yeah. like, this Wade yeah. County. And, like, they made, like, Wade County um, day for, like, a week out here. It was just, like, a lot of stuff they did, and I was just like, what that showed me, man, like, this city just, they embraced me, bro. Yeah. Like, Every part of this city has embraced me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? To the point where, like, you can't say nothing about me in this city. Not at all. You can't say nowhere you go. Like, I'm there. So, you know Those what I'm saying? gonna be out there. <laughs> Talk to them. You know what I'm saying? So, like, for me, like, that was love, bro. Like, this city embraced me that way. And uh, they made it my home. You know what I'm saying? They embraced my family. They covered me. You know, when I was going through stuff, they covered me, bro. So, like... That's definitely one thing I'm proud of to walk away. Like I talk about it more now. I hashtag Wade County a little more now as I'm so, getting to the end. So yeah. with that being said, talk about do you ever have to check Lil Z and let them know that when they say Wade County, they not talking about him? I had to check him recently about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but I mean, technically, he could take claim to that. His name is Wade. No, so, he I mean, can, yeah, technically, he can get some ownership of it. He can, he, you know, I'm, you know what I'm saying? He get a little a percentage like of it. like both You let him borrow yeah. about 5%. But I had to check him recently about it because he like, you know, Dad, this is Wade County. Like, this is my city. I'm like, what you mean it's your city? <laughs> What you do? <laughs> what you do? Young DNA, oh, yeah. baby. Young DNA. <laughs> Perfect. Gatorade commercials, they always had classic commercials. The one that you and your wife have now is one of my yeah, favorite Gatorade Remember, I hit commercials you. I say, I say, of all yo, time. That's, that's like dope, dope <laughs> that y'all did that. And uh, 
your wife used to sit courtside. They say she used to talk a lot of trash. So we had a, a question used like, to? or is she still do? Who <laughs> talked the most trash? You, your wife, or the brand new baby? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Oh man. Well, definitely from the trash talking, my wife kills me. <laughs> she is, she is the worst and the best at the same time yeah. when it comes to that. But my daughter, her the looks my daughter gives. She give, running. She running it. She running it, bro. The look she give, like, she don't mess around, bro. <laughs> I am in for, like, a long life coming up, bro. <laughs> she don't mess around. And she ain't said a word yet. She ain't said a peep. She just look at you. You know yeah. what it is. Tell her looks. Yeah, like, I don't want that bottle. Give me that bottle before. Like, it ain't time yet. Yeah. I don't like the angle you're trying to give me the bottle at. That's how it looks give yeah. you. You be like, oh, let me let me get right. <laughs> let me get tight. <laughs> oh, you, you've been with a lot of shoe companies, and... uh this new shoe and this new company that you got in, like one thing, I, I like the shoe. I think the shoe is real dope. Oh, it's raining. Oh yeah. Oh we, yeah, Miami we, baby. We got action. Yeah. The shoe, I think the shoe is real dope. Thanks brother. But the the colors that you have is crazy to me. Like the color schemes that you have, all the stuff that I've been seeing, I'm like, man, he got the cotton candy, he got this color. Like, yeah, yeah. Tell me about that company and how much you love that shoe, because it seemed like you like that shoe a whole lot, especially going into it, and is you gonna have somebody else wear that shoe, since you, you're a Hall of Famer, you gotta have somebody else keep the <laughs> legacy going in this yeah. league, and if he was, who would it be? Well, so, you know, I was with Converse for six years, yeah. and amazing, amazing relationship I had with them. I mean, they they helped take me to a, a level, that was my only endorsing yeah. partnership for a long time. I remember Converse, them shit was ugly. Y'all yeah, was with the, y'all was with the, the Jordan yeah, brand at the time, yeah, so y'all yeah. weren't looking at nothing else, nah, you know what I'm saying? understand that. Uh, <laughs> but then, I got a chance to be with the Jordan brand for three years, yes, you know, yes. came from Chicago, like there was a big moment for me, you know what I'm saying, to be with Jordan, and like Jordan wanted me to be over there. You look good in that too. Yeah, I mean, it, was, it, it, felt, it felt good, yeah, it felt yeah. good, but then, yeah. <laughs> I had to look at like I had to look at everything. I was like I think I was turning thirty, you know, what I'm saying when my contract was up, and you know they, they would have brought me back on the lesser lesser years, you know, what I'm saying money was good but lesser years, and I just had to think about like where I was trying to go, like yeah. what I'm trying to do, you know, with 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 this brand or whatever I'm trying yeah. to do, like how I'm trying to do it, you, big, you know, what I'm saying. Man. So for me it was like what Jordan has done, the blueprint that he has laid is incredible and it's amazing. And I'm thankful for it because I'm able to take a little bit of that and go do my own thing. So that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to China, which was an unbelievable market. It was a global market. And I wanted to build something of my own. I wanted to use the blueprint yeah. that Jordan set for, for us. And I wanted to build something of my own. So I've been with the brand now seven years, man. And like, I think to this point, I think I got like 12 way stores in China. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like my brand is obviously growing and then we're building. So I'm proud of it. You know what I'm saying? I'm proud of, of, of what it stands for. I'm proud of being like a, a young man from the inner city of Chicago and taking and having enough confidence to take myself globally and, and not worry about the cool factor in the US and understand that it's bigger than that and really try to build something. So like I, I love like obviously I'm on my seventh shoe. This is my last shoe that I will ever wear on a, on the NBA court. And uh, I'm trying to come with everything. Like I got some more stuff planned for this season with four this games left. Dope, I'm trying to give them everything, man. But like, what I love is they've allowed me to just be me. Yeah. They've allowed like me to just be free and like doing, doing, come up with ideas that is like, can I do this? They're like, we don't know, but let's try it. Right. You know dope. what I'm saying? Like, I'm the chief brand officer of my brand, so I have a lot of say so in it, man. So it, it's real cool, man. I'm, I'm proud of my younger self for making that decision. And I, you know, I just signed a lifetime deal with them this summer. Yeah. So for me, it's like I got so much more time to to help yeah. build this brand, and like it's a forever thing with me. So, you know, I'm I'm happy about that. I like to give a special shout out to Hargrove Junior. and uh, East St. Louis coaching staff. They won state this year, and another special shout out to uh, Lil Brazil and his family, and EJ Liddell. Uh, one of the questions I wanted to ask you, or your opinion on, is uh, is this kid called uh, named EJ Liddell? He uh won back-to-back -back state titles. He won Mr. Basketball back-to-back -back years in Illinois, which you know the history of Illinois and all the killers and and shooters that came out of Illinois that yeah. was real, real good. And for him to win it back-to-back -back in Illinois, and Say something. he didn't get the opportunity to make the McDonald's game. I know how important them, them opportunity gets when you get a chance to showcase yourself when people haven't seen you, they just heard your name a lot. So what did you thought of, your thoughts on that, him not making it, being back to back, or one of the best states 
well, I mean, basketball history. I mean, obviously, that that makes no sense. Like, that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can't even compute that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It really makes no sense. You know, I, but you're talking to somebody who didn't get to go to anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I tell my son this all the time. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Yes, you want that honor. Yes, you want those things. I mean, that's in life, we all, we, all of us want it. We always yeah. want to be recognizing uh, for what we've done. But, man, just continue to use that. Use that more. It's more motivation. motivation. You got enough motivation from being from Chicago yeah. and, and, and how, you know, saying how we grow up in Chicago and what the city goes through. That's yeah. enough motivation. But to continue to get motivation, like, okay, they don't believe. Make them believe, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And like, it's unfortunate. I wish the kid got an opportunity. I know you said he in the Iverson game, which is which is yeah, great. Which Thank is you for Iverson for doing that. Iverson, right, but man. Use that for motivation, young man. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. make sure they know. Like, they gonna they gonna know your name at some point. Yeah, I wanted to say like we we got to stop holding like games like that as a like the pedestal of of like the success rate. Like Allen Iverson, a Hall of Fame, is throwing a game, and he have real players and stuff come to the game and. And Allen Iverson being there with these kids is like bigger. It's, it's, it's just on the same level as a McDonald's game. I don't want these kids to think like, oh, just because you didn't make the McDonald's. I know it's a lot of greats that's played that, in that's it. That's played in it, but it's a lot of greats too that haven't played in it. Facts. So I just want them kids to, you know, don't hold that as the biggest bar. Facts. Nah, and like he like like and D. Wade said, from Illinois. Yeah, and like D. Wade said, it's 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 tons of like. You looking at a Hall of Famer who ain't set foot in the in the you know what I'm saying the McDonald's game. So that go your example. He's reached the pinnacle. He's he's you know what I'm saying made them as much money you can make. He's won a championship, been an MVP, All Stars, all of those things. Got his own shoes, got his own fashion stuff, all of that. And he ain't playing no McDonald's game. So yeah. you know you could do whatever you still need to do. Just keep going. That's dope, man. You know we want to um, wrap it up, but like you know as far as like you know me and bro. We've been knowing you since forever, man. We stupid proud of everything. Like I say, in my book, is MJ, Kobe, and you. And you yeah. already know what that is. That's yeah. that's like coming from where you came from and doing what you did. And not only on the court, bro, philanthropy, how you give back to the community, how you put in the churches, how your family give back from your mom to Trigil to everybody. Like, we support you. Proud of you, bro. Man, I appreciate whole, that, man. You know what I'm man. I appreciate that. You know, I, you know, all I try to do is make my my guys proud, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all led the way. Appreciate y'all for leading oh, the way, man. brother. And uh, I just try to come through and make y'all proud, and you know, lead the way for the next generation did as well. That, bro. Yeah, I did that, bro. Know what I mean? Respect. Up. All right, so that's a wrap on season one from the Knuckleheads. From Darius and myself, we want to say thank you to all the fans, to everybody that subscribed, to everybody listened to the podcast, everybody that reposted videos or made comments on the social media, and everybody that just rocked with the movement, man. We definitely want to send an extra special shout out to everybody that was a guest on the show, whether we came to y'all city and y'all house or y'all came to our city and our house. We appreciate the love, man. It was always a, a good time every time out, and um, it's been a dope experience, and um. We want to say we appreciate uh, our crew, man, from the production team at TPT, the uh, Carl, Chris Bernard, everybody from the video guys in different cities, and um, the production team cutting up, chopping up the film, and, and, and handling all of the stuff, and the people at TPT arranging travel and setting us up with that, and. Um, just everything, man. We want to say thank you to our families for allowing us to be away from the time doing the stuff that we was doing. So. Uh, we gonna be back with a season two. We got a couple nuggets that's gonna be out there for you before season two come, but uh, season two gonna be bigger and better, man. We got some pretty dope names already on the docket that's, that's uh, committed to doing it with us. So uh, we definitely wanna say appreciation to our, uh, our sponsor, Hennessy, AKA Yak. Yak, you know what I'm saying? And um, our, our, our partners at the Players Tribune, man, made this a dope experience for us. So uh, we looking forward to season two. We hope y'all tune in. Stay tuned. Get ready. It's going to be bigger and better. We out. Yeah.